Short-acting insulin formulations, which include regular insulin, are insulins that work slower than rapid-acting forms but faster than intermediate-acting or long-acting insulins. In this mnemonic, we'll give you an easy way to remember everything you need to know about regular insulin for test day. For today's scene, we're at the Pixarize Sporting Goods Store, where it's launch day for these super cool insulated shorts. These shorts are perfect for doing outdoor physical activities when it's cold outside, like hiking on the mountaintops. Your legs have full motion, but the insulation still keeps you warm. Here at Pixarize, we use insulation as our symbol for insulin because insulin and insulation sound similar. And the shorts can remind you of short-acting drugs. Get it? Putting this together, the insulated shorts can help you remember that this video is all about short-acting insulin formulations. Insulated shorts for short-acting insulins. Got that? Let's move on to the most important member of the short-acting insulins. As is common with clothing, these insulated shorts come in a slim and a regular fit. This happy customer snagged a pair of the regular fit shorts. These regular fit shorts are here to remind you that the main short acting insulin is regular insulin. Regular insulin is exactly what it sounds like. Good old regular insulin. The exact same insulin as that made by your own pancreas. The brand names for regular insulin include Humulin R or Novolin R, where the R at the end stands for regular. But if you can just remember regular insulin is a short acting insulin, you'll be good to go for test day. The parking around the store is pretty limited, but since this guy got here early for the sale, he was able to snag a close parking spot with a two-hour parking limit. Which reminds me, just like you can park in this spot for two hours, short-acting insulin peaks around two hours after administration. You see, each type of insulin has a different time of onset, peak, and duration. The most important time to remember is when each insulin type peaks, because that is when the blood sugar lowering effects are most pronounced, as well as when hypoglycemia is most likely to occur. The NCLEX is most likely to ask you questions about insulin peaks, so that is what is symbolized in this video. Now, the insulin peak is technically a range, because the actual peak time differs according to the biology of each patient. Short-acting insulin has a peak range of anywhere from 2 to 5 hours, but averages around 2 hours after subcutaneous injection. On test day, if the question is asking about when the insulin will peak or when hypoglycemia is most common, choose the answer that is closest to two hours from administration. Just remember two-hour parking and it'll be easy for you to remember that short-acting insulin peaks around two hours. In addition to the insulated shorts, this guy grabbed a new hydration bladder. You know, the bag that you can put in a backpack with a tube for easy access to water while hiking? He is so excited about it that he's already trying it out. The way he is holding the bag of water with the tube coming down looks a lot like an IV bag with tubing, don't you think? This can help you remember that short-acting insulin is the only type of insulin that can be given through an IV line in hospital or critical care settings. You see, all other types of insulin can only be given as subcutaneous injections, while regular insulin can be given either as a subcutaneous injection or through an IV. When administered by way of IV, the regular insulin will start working instantly, as opposed to the two-hour peak with subcutaneous administration. This should make sense since we're literally shooting the insulin right into the blood with an IV. The window cleaner is doing a good job at making sure that window is crystal clear so that passers-by will notice the insulated shorts in the display window. By the way, this clear window is our symbol for the clear appearance of regular insulin compared to intermediate-acting insulin, which is more of a cloudy liquid. This will matter when we talk about mixing insulins, as we'll discuss in our next symbol. Like I mentioned before, these insulated shorts are expected to sell out quickly, so the store owners were sure to put up a sign that says, First come, first served. When you think of this first come, first served sign, remember that when mixing different types of insulins in the same syringe, Short-acting or regular insulin should be drawn into the syringe first. You see, short-acting and intermediate-acting insulins are often mixed together for administration. The order of mixing these two insulins is important. Draw up regular insulin before NPH insulin, which is an intermediate-acting insulin. Another way to remember this is to use the acronym RN. You already know RN stands for registered nurse. But in this case, the R stands for regular, while the N stands for NPH, 
as in draw up regular first, then NPH after. Finally, you might hear people say to draw up clear before cloudy. We've already talked about how regular insulin is clear compared to NPH, which is cloudy. Whether you use the first come first served sign, the acronym RN, or clear before cloudy, just remember that when mixing insulins, regular insulin should be drawn up in the syringe first. And that's everything for short-acting insulin. Let's review what we've learned here. Short-acting insulin formulations include regular insulin. As a short-acting insulin, regular insulin works slower than rapid-acting insulins, but faster than intermediate-acting insulins with a peak around two hours after subcutaneous administration. Importantly, regular insulin is special because it is the only type of insulin that can be given through an IV line. Regular insulin has a clear appearance, and when mixed in a syringe with intermediate-acting insulins, the regular insulin should be drawn up in the syringe first. I better run in and grab a pair of these insulated shorts for myself before they run out. Thanks for joining me in this demonic video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.